Hi, uh, this is Bess again, and we're back to talk some more about uh, QMMM methods. So um, in the last video, I mentioned that we would also be discussing how we would divide this partition um, if we wanted to cross covalent bonds, and that's what we'll be talking about in, in video two. So in the last, in the last, uh, our last discussion, we talked about what we would do if we had solute as QM and solvent as MM. But what would we do if, if we don't, if we don't want to do that? We want to study this system. We're not, we're not really interested in the solvent in this case, but, but a, a system where we have big bulky groups um, surrounding the, the system of our actual interest. So um, you might ask the question, can we consider uh, the, the large portions of our ligand, our, our phenyl rings or our silomethane groups as MM, um, we could imagine that these would be well described with uh, force fields, and then treat uh, the part of the molecule that I've, I've shown in this figure as a ball and stick with uh, QM. Of course, this leads to the, compl the question that we've been discussing all the way through, how do we how do we compute the energy to allow these allow these systems to interact? And one way to do this would be to think about what people call mechanical embedding. So basically, what they do is they say, well, let's compute the energy for the small system using QM, and then we compute the energy for the big system the whole system, so including this part here, so everything, using MM. And then we subtract off the energy if we compute just the small part with MM. So basically what the idea would be is you can think of it as a correction where you compute your real system, the big system at the MM level, but you think that the MM description of the part that you're interested in is probably not very good. So you subtract that out and correct it by adding the QM part. In practice, uh, we have to think a little bit more about what we would actually compute. So if we again think back to the solvent-solute case, we could compute the solvent separately, the solute separately, and they were complete molecules. We, we hadn't done anything crazy to them. Um, and so, of course, our energy calculation was, in a sense, straightforward. However, now that we're breaking covalent bonds, if we think about a model system, in this case I've just drawn ethane, well, if we divide the molecule in half and we compute this as the QM region and this is the MM region, the, this uh, part, if we, if we leave this uh, one, one bond broken, is, is not really going to be a meaningful calculation. Um, you're, you have an unsatisfied carbon center, and of course if you continue to do this over a large molecule, um, the energies you compute might not be very meaningful. So what, what people do is they, they cap the system with a hydrogen atom. So when you compute the QM region, you would, you would compute uh, methane here as, as your small space. And then um, Likewise, when you compute the MM region, you would cap the hydrogen. And then when, you, uh, when we correct the energy, uh, they should, uh, we have to consider how the capping hydrogens will be treated and how they would cancel out. Now, um, you can imagine that this seems to work pretty well for energies. We can write an expression. And I think that the argument where we subtract off the um, the, the small part, the small MM calculation where we think it's not doing very good, we're removing that contribution to the whole and adding something better. I mean, this, this makes sense. But how do we move beyond just running one ener energy calculation to optimizing the geometry? How do we get the gradient? Um, when you're running a series of MM calculations and displacing, displacing the... Um, the atoms as you were optimizing the geometry, you're following the MM potential energy surface. 
and that is going to be a different potential energy surface from the QM space. So which, which of these surfaces should we follow? Should we really follow one versus the other? Um, these are things that, that people had to, had to address. Um, one way that, uh, that has been done to, to treat this is to use what's called the Integrated Molecular Orbital Molecular Mechanics Method, uh, IMA. And, and in doing this, what they decided to do is to say, well, what if we take the atoms in our small space and our large space and we align them? So we put those capping hydrogens on the same bond as the carbon-carbon bond that we broke. Um, if we, if we do that, then maybe we can write expressions for the gradient that's, that are sums of both the QM and MM gradients um, since we have them along the same vectors. And, and this is what people have done, and in this way they can follow the, the potential energy surface and um, optimize the geometry. Now there's nothing limiting us to choosing only a QM region for one part and an MM region for the other. Uh, this has also been used for, for places where you might want to use QM MM prime. So maybe you want to use density functional theory for the smaller region, and then you want to use a semi-empirical method for the, the larger region. Uh, you, you can do this within, within, this, um, within this framework. Professor uh, Kenji Morikuma also went on to develop a method called ONIUM, probably one of the best acronyms ever, since it's uh, our own n-layered integrated molecular orbital and molecular mechanics um, method. And so ONIUM is a really nice acronym in that if we, if we look at this cartoon, you can think of it as analogous to layers of an onion, um, which is why I think they wanted to be so creative in, in how they worked out worked out the acronym to really give people this, this connection to how they were partitioning their space. And you can go beyond just two layers. So people will say, I did a two-layered onion calculation or a three-layer onion calculation and then, and then discuss what they did. And so um, here I'm showing an example of a three-layered onion calculation where perhaps you have a system where you treat one part at your highest QM level um, in this example, they use density functional theory. And then at your, uh, you have another region that's treated at a QM, lower QM level, which was Hartree-Fock. And then the final outside of the system, the largest portion, was treated with amber. And so you can see here in this, um, I took this image from the, the Gaussian manual uh, in the onion, onion portion, so you can refer there uh, if you want to see a little more discussion about some of the the options and what you can do with this approach, but if you if you take the um, density functional theory result and you wanted to do a DFT calculation on this full system, uh, what the onion onion approach allows you to do is say that the energy for for the full DFT calculation is is approximately the same as if you were to do the onion calculation where you calculate the real system, so the large full system uh, with amber, so our low level, and then you calculate the medium sized system with your intermediate level, and then the smallest with DFT, and then of course you subtract off the contribution. So in our Hartree-Fock calculation here, we also had a Hartree-Fock contribution from this small part, uh, which we want to only have the DFT part, right? So we subtract off the Hartree-Fock part. And then in the AMBER system, we also have a Hartree-Fock calculation. This, this system, this intermediate size system, was treated at the Hartree-Fock level and then was also calculated in our AMBER space. So we have to subtract off the part that comes from the AMBER calculation because we want to replace it with the part that comes from the Hartree-Fock space. So, um, Really, this is exactly what we talked about when we had only the, the two parts. However, in this case, now we have three layers. And so what we subtract off um, is perhaps on first look a little confusing um, as to why you subtract off what you do. But when you break it down, um, it's really removing the contributions 
from uh, the the larger system. So there was a Hartree-Fock calculation done on an intermediate system, and we remove that small part that we want to be treated at a higher level.